Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I am going to be giving you my read aloud book review for the 2021-2022 school year. And these right here are all the read aloud chapter books we've read this school year. So I cannot wait to share with you guys all the books we've read and my final review. And hopefully this video can kind of give you guys some inspiration on some read aloud picks for you in the upcoming school year. So you guys, let's go ahead and get right on into this thing. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I am a homeschooling mom to three girls ages 10, four, and two, and I am finishing up my second year of homeschooling. So you guys, if you, any of you have seen like my original uh, read aloud choices for the year, you will have noticed that half of these books were not even mentioned in that video. So one thing and one takeaway that I'm learning is, is that uh, when it comes to read aloud and reading time, in my household, I am still going to kind of be like loosey goosey. I really want our read aloud time to be special and I want it to be like inspiring and I really want it to be fun. So um, if we gravitate towards a certain book over another, that's just kind of like how I'm going to just continue to do it. Um, so yeah, let me stop rambling and let's go ahead and talk about the books. So our first book for our school year was The Trumpet of the Swan. And I feel like this was the perfect start to our homeschooling year. You guys, this book right here goes over Louise's journey as a trumpeter swan who is born without a trumpet or without a voice. Um, I love following Louise's journey, how first of all, he has to learn how to play the trumpet in order for him to uh, win over his affection or the love of his life, who is Serena. Um, one thing I definitely will say, the main model of this read aloud is perseverance. I love how Louise, he was perseverant. Uh, even though he didn't have a voice, he always found a way. And um, I really enjoyed this read aloud. I thought this was a great Kickstarter all to our homeschooling year. And I definitely would recommend this one to any of you guys. I don't wanna give out too many spoilers, but this definitely was a great adventure, light hearted and fun story on Louise's journey. So um, Trumpet of the Swan, definitely three stars in our homeschool. So our next read aloud that we went on into for the fall was PAX. And again, you guys, PAX was a great read aloud. This actually is in my daughter's top three read aloud for the school year. We actually listened to this one on Scribe and it was so much fun like hearing uh, the different voices of the different people without PAX or within the story of PAX. So this story right here follows along Peter and PAX's adventure. So Peter finds PAX as a little kit or a little fox and he takes care of him until his father goes off to war and Pax becomes like a bigger uh, fox and his dad tells him it's time for him to or it's time for Peter to release Pax out into the wild. So that's all and where I'm going to stop when it comes to this story. But one thing I definitely will say is I love how Sari Pennerpacker, she wrote this story and how each of the chapters alternated from Pax's perspective to Peter's perspective. And then in the end, their stories came together and I really loved it. It was very captivating. This is one of those stories that has you like on the edge and like I said before we listened to this one on scribe and it was so much fun like hearing all the different characters and the voices and different things like that like I'm not creative when it comes to like reading out loud like I don't have like all the voices and stuff so it was fun hearing it from that perspective so PAX was definitely uh, in my daughter's top three uh, read alouds for our school year so for Christmas time, you guys, we went ahead and we read the best slash worst Christmas pageant ever. This actually was a recommendation from Tori from the Oglesby Ohan. I believe she read this one with her kiddos last Christmas. So I put it on my list for our uh, upcoming school year. So I'm so happy we read this book. This book actually follows along a group of kids called the Herdmans who are just like the baddest kids in the town. I mean, you guys, they swear, they steal. Some of the kids even smoke like <laughs> this is like a typical like 90s or 80s type of read aloud when you read this one um it is so uh funny um 
one thing I definitely will say this story you are able to pull a lot of morals from this story one of the big morals that I feel like my daughter was able to take away from this one is not to judge a book by its cover um, one thing I definitely love is that in the end the Hurtmans they truly understand what the true Christmas story is about uh, throughout going on their pageant process even though their pageant uh, that they do isn't uh, directly a depiction of the uh, birth of Jesus. Um, I love their depiction and at, in the end you guys it turns out to be the best pageant ever for that church. So um, this was a great funny lighthearted, great Christmas read aloud. I definitely would recommend it to uh, anyone to read. So uh, Tori she has some really good recommendations so this one was a good one. So for the fall time, you guys, we actually read Little House on the Prairie. And I will say that even though this wasn't like my favorite read aloud that we've read this school year, um, this read aloud bought about some great conversations in my homeschool. We went on some serious rabbit trails from this book in my homeschool. So uh, for that, I definitely would say I'm still glad we read this book, Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie, this goes on Ma and Pa and Mary and Laurel's journey as they go into Prairie Land or Indian Territory and they begin to settle there. Uh, one thing I would definitely say about this book is that just be ready to have conversations with your kiddos because uh, the way that Ma and Pa, uh, their, uh, I guess, behavior and their language towards the indigenous people, it was not good at all. Uh, you will be having some deep conversations with your kiddos. This book definitely was a great introduction into American history for my daughter. We haven't started American history. However, while we were reading this book, we were going down so many rabbit trails, reading so many different books, looking in our encyclopedia, talking about indigenous people because um, she just wanted to know more. So for that, I'm so happy that I didn't just throw out the read aloud and say, oh, we're not going to read this. I'm so happy happy we stuck onto it and if anything this book right here has gotten my daughter excited about a start in American history so even though it wasn't my favorite read aloud of the school year it definitely brought about like some great conversations uh, a great starter into our kickstart of American history so I'm so happy for that that we did continue and we read Little House on the Prairie so you guys I didn't want to stop the series because my daughter she still loves Little House on the series or the Little House series we we have read Little House in the Big Woods and Farmer Boy last year. Farmer Boy was her absolute favorite so far. So we just went along with the series and we read one on the banks not one <laughs> we read on the banks of plum creek for our spring read aloud as we were coming back from our black history month. So Brielle really enjoyed On the Banks of Plum Creek. I really enjoy On the Banks of Plum Creek. I'm so happy I listened to a lot of you guys' comments on my video that I initially made in my like one of my homeschool updates about on uh, or Little House on the Prairie. You guys were telling me like this, keep on reading, keep on reading. It gets better and it definitely does get better because On the Banks of Plum Creek was definitely a good one. I definitely love seeing their experience as they got to a new uh, settlement, a new prairie. Uh, just all the struggles that they went through spring fall summer I mean this book right here you guys they went through the thick of it <laughs> in this book and I love seeing them persevere my daughter enjoyed this book so much that she did a water art color depicting uh, some of the prairie scenes that uh, we were reading about uh, another thing too is we had to write a book report for her English curriculum and she chose this book right here to do her book report and she did an excellent job on that so this read aloud was like an opportunity for us to like kind of get some other things in our homeschool and I'm so happy we chose this one again this was a great one and I'm happy that we didn't stop the series so on the banks of Plum Creek this one was a great one in our homeschool this year so after we read On the Banks of Plum Creek, you guys, we picked up Charlotte's Web, another book from E.B. White. And this is a classic. I'm so happy that I like have this opportunity to read all these classics with my daughter and she enjoyed it. And it's just so funny like how we read the book and then we watched like the live action Charlotte's Web movie. And my daughter just always says like, mommy, like the books always win. And um, I know Charlotte's Web may not be for all, but this definitely was a fun, lighthearted 
hearted one and I'm so happy to like read this one again with my two toddlers when they get a little bit older because um, I definitely think that these classics right here I mean they're classics for a reason and we had so much fun uh, listening about Charlotte and Wilbur and everything so yeah even though it was kind of sad at the end it still was a great uh, read aloud. So after we read Charlotte's Web, you guys, we read 100 Dresses. And 100 Dresses is about a girl named Wanda who wears the same blue dress to school every single day. And uh, she is confronted by some other girls in the classroom. And they ask her, you know, like, Wanda, do you have any other dresses? And she actually says, well, I have 100 dresses. And I love this story for character purposes. I mean, you can really go on some deep dives with your kiddos about uh, bullying about mistreating others uh, because of differences. Um, you can really uh, get into some good morals and good character uh, building studies with this book, 100 Dresses. This one was cute because this was just a great lighthearted read. I mean, we read this one in like a week. It has pictures in it. And this definitely, if you are starting off your read aloud journey, I would definitely say start off like with Charlotte's Web, 100 Dresses, The Trumpet of the Swan. Like these are like some great like starter read alouds in your household because they're lighthearted. You can pull out morals from them. And I definitely know uh, Brie, she enjoyed this one as well. We listened to this one again on Scribe. And again, I love like how Scribe had like the different voices for the different people. And it really uh, dragged Brielle into this story. Uh, it was so crazy. We were supposed to be starting science and Brielle was like, mommy, can I just listen to one more chapter? Can I just listen to one more chapter? And I believe we got this one done really, really fast. I forgot. I know it was like a week, but I'm not exactly too sure but I know we read this one really really fast so um, yeah we enjoyed 100 dresses so you guys we actually did an amazing Africa heritage back from Amber O'Neill Johnston that was like our history slash geography study that we did for our homeschooling year so we was able to read a lot of books about Africa so I'm going to share with you guys some of the read alouds that we read that went along with that amazing Africa pack the first read aloud that we read that went along with that pack was Anna Hibiscus. And you guys, this was such a great, cute, lighthearted story about Anna Hibiscus, her big family, the compound that they lived in, um, and just how Anna, she lives in Africa and she never seen snow. And it's just so cute how she's finally able to see snow. And I really, really love this story. It was a great lighthearted depiction of Anna, of her culture, of where she lived, what she ate, what she did and this was definitely a great fun read my daughter really enjoyed this one when we read it along with our amazing Africa pack another chapter book that we read with the amazing Africa pack was number one car spotter and number one car spotter it definitely was a cute funny read aloud you guys this one had us laughing the whole time we were reading it uh, number one again he lives in a big compound with all of his families and his aunts and his uncles and his grandma and everyone like has like a funny name like his best friend's name is coca-cola and <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cute like all of the different funny names that all of his family has and again this goes along with his journey how he lives in his village what they do and uh, one of the chapters in this book it talks about how their cart breaks down uh, that they take all like their goods their mangoes their uh, everything that they're going to sell in the market uh, their cart broke down so it just shows how uh, number one finds an innovative way to fix their cart in order for them to still be able able to go to market and sell all of their goods so they can use the money to get like pencils and school supplies and other things like that that they need that they you know don't grow on their compound so these two books was like really really great funny lighthearted stories about these children uh, that lived in Africa their way of life and um, my daughter really loved it Another book that we read that wasn't a part of the Africa, uh, Amazing Africa pack, but a book that I selected for us to read was A Long Walk to Water. And you guys, this right here was Brielle's top favorite of our overall homeschool year. This book right here, it follows along Nyla's and Salva's journey uh, in Africa. It talks about the hardships of war. Um, this book, again, it does kind of like how the PAX book does, uh, where each chapter we were either 
following along Nyla or Salva's journey uh, in Africa. Nyla was having a hard time uh, just finding fresh and clean water for her family. It talks about the mile journeys that she had to go on twice a day just to uh, get fresh water for her and her family. And uh, Salva's journey, it talks about uh, the, the impacts of war. This book right here is a historical fiction. It's based on true events. Um, but they did say that in the book that they put their own uh, twist on some of the events. So I definitely will say Brielle loved the determination that they had to uh, make things better, to do things better, and to want better in their life. And I think that that's one thing she definitely took away from it is that whatever you want in life, it doesn't matter what cards you're dealt with. You definitely just have to be determined and fight for whatever you want in life and not only fight for yourself, but fight to make a difference not in others' lives around us. Um, one thing I definitely will say is that this showed Brielle the hardships that other people have and that other people face and um, how just the simple act of having clean water impacted uh, Nyla life um how war impacted salva's life and this definitely was a good powerful read aloud i definitely will recommend you to read this with your upper elementary possibly middle school um for the content of this again um it goes into some hard truths i felt like brielle was ready to hear them and she definitely took away a lot from a long walk to water uh so i'm so happy i read this one and i'm so happy like she really really enjoyed this one so the read aloud that we're doing right now you guys and i know we're not going to finish it because we only have like one more week left of school our end date is actually may 20th so you guys like just pray for us like we're at the finish line we're getting kind of tired but i know like we can you know we can we can make it <laughs> so right now i figured to go ahead and pick out a fun reel out for us to read so we are reading fast pitch we have only read the first two chapters of this one and this one is a really really cute story uh so far we are uh reading about shanice who is on she is the captain of the first all black softball team in her community and it's just showing how she is going to lead her team to victory so far in the first couple of chapters they're not doing too well uh, it kind of left us on a cliffhanger so my daughter is so excited to see like what is going to happen how Shanice is going to pull through how their softball team is going to pull through so um this is definitely a fun one for the summer I know a lot of you guys are like in softball season so my daughter she is really enjoying this um I don't know who knows Brielle might want to do softball after reading this story so um we are definitely enjoying this one and this is going to kick start our you know summer read alouds so you guys those are like all of our read alouds that we have read this year i'm not gonna lie i think i did a pretty good job for our read alouds because my daughter said you know she said mommy a long walk to water was my favorite but i really enjoy all of the read alouds this year so hopefully i did a good job for uh next school year and we will kind of like enjoy our read alouds so um yeah you guys thank you so much for uh watching today's video i hope you leave inspired uh finding some good reads for your family so i look forward to seeing everybody in my next one bye